It all started when I bought a beautiful model of an antique ship. Wow! How much is that ship? Sorry, sir, I just sold it. How much for the ship? I'll raise it to 60. 70. No! All that attention over a little ship didn't make sense until Snowy accidentally broke it. A parchment with what appeared to be a coded message had fallen out of the ship. I didn't know what to make of it, so I went to see Captain Haddock. Take a closer look at this ship! It's just like the model! Captain Haddock told me the story of his great ancestor, Sir Francis Haddock, who sailed His Majesty's ship, the Unicorn. The Unicorn was attacked by pirates, and after a valiant struggle, were forced to surrender their ship to the most feared of all pirates. I am Red Rackham. And I am Sir Francis Haddock. While Red Rackham gloated over the stolen treasure, Sir Francis realized that he was the only person who could stop the reign of terror that had cost the lives of so many. He had intended to sink the unicorn, but Red Rackham forced a final confrontation. Prepare to die, Sir Francis. May heaven forgive your wicked soul. With only seconds to spare before the powder keg exploded, Sir Francis made his final escape to a deserted island. He watched as the unicorn and Red Rackham's treasure sank to a watery grave. Years later, he left a clue to Red Rackham's treasure hidden in three identical models of the unicorn. That's it! This parchment is a clue to the location of Red Rackham's treasure! We began our search for the other two parchments and soon realized we were not alone. Two brothers, Max and Gustav Bird, had the other parchments and would stop at nothing to get mine. Escape seemed impossible, but as usual, when things were at their darkest, Snowy! <laughs> Following the arrest of the Bird brothers, we were finally able to recover the missing parchments. For tis from the light that light will dawn. It's latitude and longitude. 10,000 typhoons! It's where the unicorn sank! This means we're gonna be rich! Bill. Morning, George. I hear you just signed on with Captain Haddock's crew. Yep, we're sailing for the South Seas with Tintin. Oh, the reporter who caught the Bird Brothers. This time he's after Red Rackham's treasure. The pirate Red Rackham? I thought that was just an old sea tale. I'll tell you the rest later. Listen to this, Captain. Although more than likely just an old sea tale, sources say the treasure hunts full speed ahead. Tintin and Captain Haddock could not be reached for comment. Comment? I'll give them comments. Parasitic snoops, headline hedonists, word-hungry mongers. Yes? Good day. I'd like to speak to Mr. Tintin, please. I'll get him. Hang on. He's gone? Oh, dear. <sighs> Maybe another time. Wait, can I help you? Mr. Tintin, how do you do? My name is Professor Calculus, Cuthbert Calculus. I understand you're off on a treasure hunt soon. So? Have you considered the sharks? Sharks? They're very dangerous creatures, you know. That's why I invented an anti-shark submersible. I'm sorry, Mr. Calculus. I don't have the time for this. Yes, tomorrow is fine. No, sir. I'm sorry. The answer is no. Right now? Of course. Let's go. I'm so glad you agreed to come, gentlemen. This is amazing. This way, please. Ah! What the? <clears throat> it's a clothes brushing machine. Voila! <gasps> Shark submarine? 
My shark-proof submarine is an exploring machine, gentlemen. Let me explain. It can dive up to 900 feet. It travels at a speed of up to six knots and has a two-hour oxygen supply. I'll show you how it works. <laughs> oh, dear. I'm sorry, Professor, but your machine won't do. For two? A two-seater? No, it won't do. Goodbye. Bye. I'll see you tomorrow. Okay, men. Ready. Hi, Captain. Morning, landlubber. Yoo-hoo! Oh, no. Calculus. Hello, gentlemen. I'm ready to demonstrate. I'll take care of this. Now, I still have to assemble it, of course. Got it? For duty, sir. sir. Detectives? Shh! Don't say detective. We've gone undercover. The Bird Brothers have escaped. We've been assigned to keep an eye on things. Fine. Bunk down below, then report to the bridge. Yes, sir. Prepare to raise anchor. <coughs> Run the flag. Secure latchings. <coughs> Captain, someone is stealing food. A thief in our midst? Why, the glutton, gourmand, greedy piglet! Captain, what's wrong? Someone's stealing food. Hmm. Snowy? Don't be so quick to accuse anyone unless you have proof. Snowy! Here, boy! Snowy! Snowy! Snowy. Captain! Help! Captain! It's a boom! Careful! <gasps> this isn't a bomb, Captain. It's not. Then what is it? And what's it doing in my hold? Look at this. Wait till I get my hands on him. I'll tweak his cheeks to rubber. Whoops. Calculus. Good morning, gentlemen. Oh, thank you for waking me. I was oh. hoping you could give me a cabin. I slept rather badly last night. A cabin? I ought to throw you overboard. You hear me? With a view of the sea. Delightful. Oh. I don't see anything. Are you sure your calculations are correct, Captain? Of course they're correct, numbhead! Of course they are! Even in this fog! What? Captain... What do you want? According to my pendulum, we should be further west. Look! The island! That must be Sir Francis Haddock's island!
was that? Goodness, have you found something? It's the Francis's boat. We're on the right track. like Sir Francis. Thundering typhoons, you're right. Men can boobs. Huh? Popping jays, bye-bye ghost. Uh, ghost. Ghost. Ah, ah, Bobbins. Look, there's your ghost detectives. <laughs> <laughs> Sir Francis must have taught their ancestors how to talk. Well, blistering barnacles. Blistering barnacles, blistering barnacles, blistering barnacles. <laughs> well, that was a waste of time. How do we know the treasure isn't buried somewhere on the island? Because Sir Francis would have brought it back with him when he was rescued. No, the treasure must be in the wreck of the unicorn, somewhere on the ocean floor. I hope so. Now remember, the clock shows oxygen supply and the red button is a smoke flare. For when you find the unicorn. Okay, Captain, lower me down. Taking a rest. I'll give you a rest. Man, not pump. No! That's better. He's 
shown something. Must have been some rub. Quick, that's the signal to pull Tintin up. Blistering blue barnacles. He set up a shark. Just old documents. Ah. May I take a look? Don't lose heart, oh. Captain. We'll keep searching. hasn't been a total loss. After all, we found some fine artifacts. I'm glad to see we're finally headed west. Treasure hunt ends in failure. Good morning, Tintin. Hi, Professor. I'm returning the documents. Documents? What documents? Oh, I'm fine, thank you. But surely you remember the documents you found in the Unicorn. I thought this one would interest you. It seems that Marlin Spike Hall is Captain Haddock's family estate. That's it! Professor, you're a genius! <laughs> Don't you see, Captain? No. The treasure must be at Marlin Spike Hall. The treasure? At Marlin Spike Hall? Oh, no. Marlin Spike's up for sale. Oh, dear. Captain, you must buy it immediately. Uh, What's wrong? Don't worry about money. The government bought my Andy Shark submarine for quite a tidy sum. And since you let me test it, I'll buy Marlin Spike for you. Wow! This way, Captain. It might be in here. It's full of junk. Where will we start looking? Three brothers joined will shine forth the Eagle's Cross. Captain, the cross. The Eagle! Look! Sir Francis' island! Wow! Red Rackham's treasure! <coughs> Shh! Someone's coming. Calculus! Calculus. Whoa! 
Ah, Mr. Tintin, I'm glad you're here. I finally located the treasure. <laughs> <laughs> An impressive display, Captain. Yes, just as I always said, more to the west. Ha <laughs> ha! All's well that ends well, eh, Professor? No, thank you. Never between meals. No, no! I said, all's well that ends well! Without any doubt. Which reminds me of that old saying, all's well that ends well. Wouldn't you agree, Captain? Without any doubt. <laughs>